So yesterday we looked at um, domain and range, uh, what uh, the difference between a relation and a function is, and then I gave you some time to work on looking at that in terms of what a function, uh, trying to distinguish the difference between a relation and a function. This is basically where we were at with it all. Um, not too sure how far you got. Might just focus on a couple of questions to start with. You don't, we can just look at it from the screen. So number three said, is it possible for a function to have more than one y-intercept? Explain your answer. Anyone want to have a go at that? Yep, Evie, go for it. So was that a yes or a no? No, and for the reason you said, good, exactly right. You would have to um, fail a vertical line test if it had more than one line to step, good. Um, is the graph of a straight line always a function? Who, reckon, who reckons yes? No one. Easy, you got your hand half up. You reckon it is? I mean, if we have a look at it, oh, sorry, I've got all this up on the screen here, but I didn't put Vivi on, so that's not very good. Okay, so if I just use a little spare spot here somewhere, um, if I draw my graph lines in like this, that's a straight line. That's definitely a function, right? And if I, even if I draw it like that, it's still a function. It's horizontal, but it's still a function because it just means that everything, every input here goes to the same output, whatever that is, but it's still a function. So why are so many people saying that a straight line is not always a function? Florence. Yep. Yep. Or, or anywhere parallel, right? Yeah. Yep. So in that particular instance, a straight line is not a function. The equation is like this, x equals two or whatever, x equals a whole number. So it's an equation, we can graph it, it's a relation, but it's not a function, okay? Because it literally fails in every possible sense of the word, it literally fails the vertical line test because it's a vertical line. Yep. So there you go. It is, it is in fact, um, it can't be said to be true for the whole of all straight lines. But you could say it nearly always is. There's only one instance where it isn't. All righty. So that was that. Um, I don't think I'll do any more here. I'm not too sure how far you got, but um, yeah. We'll move on. So at bottom of page 69 is where I ask you to have your textbooks open, but it's on the screen as well. Um, this idea of a function machine, we're going to come back to next week when we talk about what, something called composite functions. But it's a nice little visual here in a way in that the rule that links the input, the X, to the output, the Y, the rule can be sort of seen as a machine which, which, um, which uh, changes the input to an output. So the input is x, it says I double the input and then add 3, and then the output is 2x plus 3. Double the input and then add 3. So if I feed in a specific number like 0, 0 goes into the machine, 0 is doubled to 0, and then 3 is added, out would come 3. So an input-output machine. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail next week. But um, it's kind of useful to think of a function like a machine and the machine operates according to a certain rule. What I wanted to move on to is a notation I don't tend to use a lot. I can't even remember it being in the IB exams, but because they use it a fair bit in this textbook, I, at least I wanted to show you this as well. And that is you can write the notation um, like this. In, like yesterday I went F colon D arrow R to say that the function goes from the domain to the range. Um, but this is also another notation where we say the function is defined such that x, the input, goes to 2x plus 3. That's the rule. 
so x to the rule. Okay, and then this is the notation you're probably more familiar with, f of x equals 2x plus 3. So that means we can sort of see this as f has an input of x and the output is the rule double, double the input and add 3. Okay, and then when we graph it, we tend to use y equals 2x plus 3. And sometimes this as well, y equals f of x. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about it? It is just notation, but there's a, a few ideas floating about there. So if you've got any questions about it, now's the time to ask. Okay, though. And then the rest of it is, uh, again, a little bit of language. Y equals f of x is sometimes called the function value or the image of x. That's a word that I'll use sometimes, image. Um, so it's the image of x. So, um, and then when you've got the function defined, and this is the other thing I just wanted to show you, is that, um, hang on, I'll just go back on my notes. Um, is that, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you by example rather than looking at this actually. So here we have a function f that go, that takes x as its input and its output is x squared. Okay, so when we want to evaluate, what we mean by that is that we're putting a number into the function. So we would write f of x equals x squared in general. And then we can, if we want to find out what the output would be for a given input, we replace the x with a number like 2. And then we would replace the x in the rule, oops, with the number like 2 and then we would get our result. That's called evaluating. Okay, good so far. You can evaluate more than just, I think that I haven't got left room for this, so ignore that for a second. Um, you can evaluate more than just numbers, and this will become really important as we go along. So for example, I could go f of a, and what that means is that where I've got an x, I just replace it with an, with an, uh, an a. So the result, the output would be a squared. See what I did there? I can even do this, f of x plus 2. The rule, is the, the rule is to take the input and square it. But the input is no longer x. The input is x plus 2. And so the output would be x plus 2 all squared. Similarly, f of 3x would be 3x all squared which is equal to 9x squared, etc. Does that make sense? Now, this is a really important thing for you to practice because we're going to be using it over and over and over again in the course. The idea that we can write it as a function like so, or sorry, write it like a function like so. We can evaluate it for specific numbers like so, but we can also find new expressions by putting in a new, ex, uh, a, a new expression in as our input, and then our output looks a little bit different. Okay, so this is what you're going to practice now. So if you look at exercise 3b, there's quite a few to do, and I don't think it's particularly valuable to do, do them all. So from exercise 3b, I want you to do the left-hand side. So having a look here, it simply means 1a, 2a, 3a to get a sense of it, and then um, 4a and b, you might as well do that one, 5a, b and c, 6a, d, 7a, d, and so on. And I'll give you, say, uh, till quarter past 10 at the latest, and then we'll introduce something else towards the end of the lesson um, to finish off with.